Hello everyone, it's Melanie here with Vintage Heel Studio. I'm so happy you're here today. I'll be sharing a card called Quilt Hugs and this is what it looks like. This will be a watercolor card today and I will be using this beautiful watercolor palette and 140 pound watercolor paper. So this is the clear stamp set from Stampendous by Franz and I will also be using a sentiment from this little birdie clear stamp set. And whenever I'm working with watercolor paper, I like to work with my mini Misty. You can see I've already stamped the quilt, and now I'm going to add a sentiment. And this stamp set has wonderful sentiments, but I, again, am going to go with the Little Birdie, and I'm going to be using Hope Your Day is as Special as You Are, and that will go in the center of this little stamped quilt. I like to use the Misty and my grid mat here to help me align my sentiment as straight as possible. It's a little bit of a wonky design here in the center of this quilt, so it can play tricks with your eyes. And I'll do the best I can to get this stamp down using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I only have to do this one time, which is wonderful. But when you're working on highly textured paper like this watercolor paper, that's why it comes in handy to have a, some type of stamping platform. Now I'll bring over my handy little clipboard here. This will work as a hard board for behind my watercolor paper. And I'm going to use some painter's tape that I've run across my hands or my arms to get a little bit of oil from my skin so that when I remove this tape later it does not tear my watercolor paper. Just a little tip right there. You can see how quickly you just put this on your skin just a bit before applying it to your watercolor paper. Okay, now I'm getting ready to get going on my watercolor. So I'll be using a wet on wet technique, which means you simply wet the portion that you want to paint. I'm staying within the lines here. I'm gonna go a little heavier around all of the edges of these quilt squares and purposefully making the center lighter. So the, the way you do that is you load up your brush. If you stay within where you've just added your water, the watercolor will not seep onto your other blocks here. So this is in real time. You can see it takes just a little bit of time to get this down. And I want to keep the center a little lighter, so I'll simply add some water to my brush, dab it off, and then start pulling that color towards the center. This is just to give this flat image a little more visual dimension by keeping the center of the quilt blocks a little lighter than the edges. Now I thought this would be really cool if you're a good seamstress or you have a sewing machine. It would be kind of neat to go back after you've painted your piece and stitch around all these edges. And I just thought, wow, that would really look good. But I am not very good with sewing. I'll just stick to the card making. And so I am just simply painting my squares. Now you can see I'm going to hop around a little bit here. I'm going to do all of my greens, uh, which allows for the previous block of green to dry before I go back towards that with any other colors. I'm keeping the palette very simple this week with green, blue, reds, and yellows. But again, by separating them, uh, you're not going to cross-contaminate or have any of your colors bleed into one another if you let your squares dry before you go and add an adjacent color. So that's just what I've learned with some watercolor techniques here. I'm going to speed this up quite a bit and I will catch up with you later.
And here is my finished card. I hope you enjoyed watching this today and that you will come back and see me again next week. I would love to have you as a subscriber. I would love to hear any comments you have about this card or anything you might want to see in the future. And I hope that you will give me a like, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, come back and see me next week. Happy crafting, everyone.